Hi all, Ariana Barrett coming to you on this gorgeous, sunny, yummy New England day. I was just driving and the song She Talks to Angels came on from the Black Crows and I thought, okay, good time to do a video. I, I want to get this, this message across. So I thought I'm going to do the video in my truck. It's been a while since I've done a truck video. So here you go. Um, I want you to know how protected and loved, supported and guided you are on the planet. Just because maybe you don't see your angels or hear them doesn't mean that they're not there. You have an entourage, like you have a whole entourage around you of angels, archangels, spirit guides, teachers, ancestors, uh, spirit on the other side that didn't get an opportunity to come in in this lifetime. They're on the other side helping you too. But the kicker is we have to call them in. Uh, I joke there are a lot of unemployed angels out there. You have to call them in because of free will choice. We have free will choice here in Earth School, meaning we can learn the hard way, we can learn the easy way. And they're there for us, but we need to call them in. The only time when your entourage will come in is in a without being asked is in a a, a life death, a near death uh, experience. Um, you know, when someone has an accident and, and the car is totally demolished and yet somehow they walk away unscathed, not even a bruise, it's like that shouldn't have happened. That's when they come in um, uninvited because they're here to protect you and, and guide you. And so I was talking to someone recently about this. I had two stories that I totally forgot about. And I thought, oh, let me share these. <laughs> I'm a no school here too. Like I'm not exempt just because I, I do healing work and teach this stuff. <laughs> I'm learning too. So a couple summers ago, I was out in Hawaii. I was guided to go to some sacred sites. They're called heiaus. Some of them are for war ceremony, but a lot of them are for a sacred ceremony. And I was guided to a couple of them. And so I was on Oahu. I was on the North Shore of Oahu, which is amazing in the surfing community in the wintertime. It is, I mean, that's where Pipeline is, one of the biggest surfing contests in the world. And it's just off the chart then. I was there in the summer, so there were really no waves at all. But there's just such a huge surfing presence there. So um, I, was, I was on Oahu in the North Shore, and um, I was right across the street from the ocean, which is fantastic. So I'd go swim in the ocean there. And um, I had been invited to this professional surfing movie premiere. And right away out of my mouth, I said, yes, yes, <laughs> game on. Um, I love surfers. I love the surfing community. I love Hawaii. So it was a no brainer. But I didn't take the time to check in. Um, I just, it was automatic. My mind and my ego said, yep, go. So the day of this party and um, movie premiere, that morning, I was feeling a little conflicted inside. Um, I knew something was up, but again, I just really wanted to go. So I said, all right, let me go across the street. Let me jump in the ocean and take a swim and just clear my head. So I did. And as soon as I got in the water, it was like fire ants were in my bikini. I was like, ah, it really, really hurt. And um, I got out of the ocean and I went back to where I was staying. And I asked one of the property owners, I said, I don't know what just happened. I said, but I'm in a lot of pain. And I've been swimming over there before and nothing happened. And he said, oh, you just got stung by Portuguese man of war jellyfish. Oh, oh, OK. I said, well, I'm in a lot of pain. So what do I do? And he said, well, you can either pee on yourself or you can put vinegar on it. And I said, can I have some vinegar, please? <laughs> so um, he gave me some vinegar and I put it on it and it was the bikini line and it really, really hurt. So I also took an Advil. I never take anything, but I took an Advil and then I conked out for about four hours. So I didn't go to this party and I got it. Spirit was totally protecting me because there were gonna be things at this party that I didn't need to be around. Um, when I tuned in about it, I, I definitely got a heads up about there'd be some hardcore drugs and some other things and I, I didn't need to be there. And even though my, my ego and my heart wanted to go because it sounded like fun, um, Spirit was trying to give me a heads up before when I felt conflicted about it that maybe you should tune in about this. Um, and then when I wasn't even going to, they're like, oh, okay, you're not going to make the decision. We're going to make the decision. You're going to stay home. So a lot of gratitude for that and always feeling protected. I learned my lesson and it was a painful lesson. It was a physically painful lesson. I actually had marks from the tentacles on my legs and, and my bikini. I mean, I got stung. I got stung really bad. Um, and then the second story I was just telling her was when I lived in Brooklyn. I lived in Brooklyn almost about 20 years ago. I lived in Crown Heights, which uh, now has been gentrified. It was a really hard area when I lived there. It's right next to Bedford Stuyvesant where all the great rappers come out of. Um, so I was living in Crown Heights and the, the Parkway, Eastern Parkway, um, splits the two communities of the Hasidic Jewish community and the Caribbean community. And so I lived on the Caribbean community side. I mean, 
I didn't belong to either of those sides, so I stood out either way. But I was definitely a minority on the Caribbean side and got called some interesting names. Um, but I was working at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden, so I need to live somewhere near there. So I was there, and it was uh, Easter. It was an Easter Sunday, and I decided to visit family out on Long Island. I took the Long Island Railroad out to visit them, and then when I was heading back to Brooklyn, it was late. It was probably about like 9 o'clock at night, so by the time I would get in, it would be probably about 10 p.m. So my family said, promise, you're going to take the train all the way into Manhattan and then take a subway to Brooklyn where you live. Um, because if I got off the Long Island Railroad train in Brooklyn, there are only three stops and they're not good stops. So I said, yeah, 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 I promise. And I got on the train. And then when I was in Brooklyn on the Long Island Railroad, I was very tempted to get off because it was going to save me another 45 minutes. And it was about 10 o'clock at night, you know, Sunday night. I had to work early the next day. So... I decided to get off at the stop that I said I wasn't going to get off on. And when I stood up on the train, a couple other people stood up and I kind of looked around because I was asking for help from my, from spirit and my angels because I felt a little uncertain in my gut. It was like, okay, you really don't want to spend another 45 minutes traveling at night. You know, either way, there's some opportunity for, for things to happen or challenges. Um, and again, I'm not stupid. I mean, I definitely call in my angels and put around protection, but you also don't want to ask for trouble. So when I stood up on the train, I kind of looked around. I was asking for help from spirit because I felt like I really needed help if I'm going to get off here. And this woman stood up right next to me. She was getting off the train and she was a Caribbean woman in white nursing gear. She was an angel. Like it couldn't have been more clear. She was all in white. She was total angel. And when I stood up right before the train stopped, I said, would you mind walking, walking home with me? And she said, sure, I gotcha. So we started walking and um, we were just talking and we did walk by a number of people that would have given me trouble had I been there by myself. Definitely some drug dealers and some other people that just looking for trouble, you know, on a late Sunday night. And when we were walking by them, she said, don't worry, they're not going to touch you. You're with me. And this angel walked me to my front door. She walked me all the way home. I gave her the biggest hug and I said good night. So I just wanted to share that because when we find ourselves in a challenging situation, we can absolutely call in help. We just need to ask for it. Because as I mentioned, you know, spirit and our angels, they can come in without being asked when it's a, when it's a serious life death situation. But otherwise we need to call them in. And so whether you think you have them or not, you do, you have your entourage. And if you need to be reminded, play that Black Crow song, she talks to angels. But I just wanted to share that to let you know how loved and guided and protected and supported you are all the time all the time. So just connect to them more and more. Just talk to them, call them in a meditation and uh, have fun with it. It's so much fun. But I just wanted to let you know that. And I just want to send you the biggest hug, the most amazing, amazing energy of love and light. And I look forward to connecting again with you soon. Bye.